Put your hands to heaven and say, Holy Spirit, I yield my heart to you, my ears, and my will for the word of the living God. Teach me, guide me, strengthen me for the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Would you please open your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And please go with me to verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? And? I want you to focus on these two words for just a moment. Jesus called his 12 disciples and gathered them together and gave him power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Say, Jesus has given me all power. Say, all power and all authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have been talking about prayer over the last few weeks, and most specifically, the difference between authoritative prayer and ordinary prayer. Amen? Now, let me just give you a very brief recap. Ordinary prayer is asking God to bind and loose. It's the most common prayer. It's the most widely used prayer, but I want you to be uncomfortable with ordinary prayer. But then there's another prayer. There's a prayer that is extremely biblical and taught by the Lord himself. There is authoritative. Say authoritative. Come on, say it again. Authoritative prayer. Authoritative prayer is using his authority and using his power in the name of Jesus to bind and to loose. Do you get that? Amen. Authoritative prayer is when you, the believer, right? You, the believer, receive and believe that God has given you power and you authority. There are few subjects related to Christian victory that are more important to understand than this one. Because of the extreme importance of the authority of God and the correct understanding of what you're about to hear and the privilege of using his authority, the enemy has specifically sought to hold this knowledge from you. So what is authority? So let me just tell you something so you get this. This information you're about to hear right now is what we call counterintuitive. This information you're about to hear is counterintuitive. Ordinary prayer is intuitive. Ordinary prayer is natural, right? You see a need and you say, Oh, Lord, I just pray that you would help heal me. No, that's intuitive. That's natural. Authoritative prayer is not natural. Authoritative prayer is counterintuitive. So I want you to look up there. There is a difference between authority and power. He says, I, and he gave them, come on, read it, power and. Authority. All right, so hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Authority is not a special gift. Him giving you authority is not a gift. Authority is not prevailing prayer. Authority is not intercession. Authority is different than power. I want to give you an example, one that you'll all understand. Anybody ever seen a police officer before? 
A police officer wears a, and a, ah, he has power and he has authority. So let me give you an illustration. I want you to, 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 to picture this in light of your spiritual walk. A policeman stands in the intersection of Beltaire Parkway and Route 100. And he stands in the center of that intersection with cars passing him and trucks passing him in each direction. The trucks and the cars have the power to crush him if he steps out of line. But all of a sudden at that intersection over there, the police officer wearing a uniform and a badge raises his hand and says, Stop! And all the cars stop because he has authority. He doesn't have the power to stop that car, does he? He can't put his hand in front of that car like Superman and stop that car. He has authority. That man weighing 160 pounds with a uniform and a badge says, in the name of the institution and the administration of the Sheriff's Department of Flagler County, I say to you, stop! And all the cars yield to that authority. Jesus says, he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Instantly, the traffic comes to a halt. What is the reason for the traffic coming to a halt? Because he is vested with authority. He is vested, say vested. It's not a vestuary. He is vested with authority. One particular day, he lifted his right hand and he made an oath to the Flagler County Police Department. And he swore not to abuse his authority. He is vested by the administration for whom he swore to be a servant. And in true light, he has authority. And now he has power, vested power over those trucks and those cars. This little tiny guy telling 40, 50, 50 cars, stop! in the name of the Flagler County Police Department. It's not a gift. It's not a gift. He's vested with it because he swore to it. You hear me? So let me make this perfectly clear. Authority is not a gift. The police officer did not have a knock on the door one day and the Flagler County of Sheriff said, I've got a gift for you. Mm -mm. The authority that Jesus Christ gives us is not a gift. And the authority that he gives you is not a result of prevailing prayer. You don't have to pray a single lick to get his authority. You have his authority because you're a child of God. Do you understand that? I don't know if you do. Many, many, many a wonderful pastor and wonderful Christian has spent hours and hours and hours on their knees praying ordinary prayers, asking God to bind and to loose. The man and woman of God that understands what I'm teaching you doesn't pray at all. He stands up and says, in the name of Jesus! seen it. I've seen it. We want to talk about that this morning. Take a look at Exodus chapter 14 and verse 15. God needed Moses 
to take care of business. And the Israelites were driving him crazy. They had all kinds of needs. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore thou cry unto me? In other words, Moses got on his hands and knees and prayed that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would deliver his people from the grip of Pharaoh. And God says, why have thou cried unto me? Why are you praying to me? What does he say? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Next verse. But lift thou up thy that's his badge. That's his badge. That's like the badge of a policeman. Lift up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. That's authority. It's not prayer. He says, stop praying to me. I'm not looking for prayer here. I'm looking for you to take that rod of authority and stretch it over the sea and in the name of God, in the name of Jehovah, let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Do you see that? He said, stop crying to me. Oh, I hope you see this. I said to somebody the other day, they called me very, very late at night, and they said to me, when you get a chance, will you pray for me? I'm going through all this rigor. I said, would you please do me a favor? I said, get off the phone with me, and I want you to look at the face of that sea or that mountain you're facing, and I want you to take authority and say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Called me back five minutes later. He said, you will never believe what just happened. Ordinary prayers are nothing more than a religious excuse to not believe in the authority that God has given you. When I get a chance, I'll pray for you. I'm hoping God answers your prayers. Ah. He says, Moses, stop crying to me. Take your authority. Lift up that rod and say like the police officer, stop in the name of the Flagler County Police Department. Now, I'm going to say this to you again because it's very important. This type of authority, as you can even tell by Moses' response, is not intuitive. In other words, it doesn't come naturally. Now, hear me. Look at me, the impotent, weak, fleshly arm of the police officer that can barely lift 30 pounds with one arm, the impotent arm of the police officer, puts that arm up above all the traffic and says, stop. Moses lifts that impotent arm in the same way with that rod and says, in the name of Jehovah. And the sea splits in half. Amen. Are you getting this? Now, look at me. God loves delegating his power to you. When he knows you can be trusted with it. God loves delegating his authority to you. And with honor, are you listening to me? And with honor, he hopes you execute it. In the name of Jesus, you follow nasty devil come out of her. He loves that. He loves that because that proves your faith to be authentic. Are you awake? Are you learning something here? Seriously, encourage me. Let me know. Look at Mark chapter 11. 
Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Hey, listen, from, from this night, from this day forth, everything's going to change in your life. Amen? Amen? Look at this. Come on, read it with me. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, what is a mountain? Anybody got a mountain in their backyard? No. So a mountain is symbolic, right, of problem. A problem way beyond your control. Now, an anthill is not a problem. Right? An anthill is not a problem. You'll just... That's ordinary prayer. But a mountain's a big deal. He says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Come on. Be thou and be cast into the sea, and shall not... Where? Where? In his heart. Come on. He says more. But shall... Say that word again. Say that word again. Believe. Be Say believe. believe. Say it again. Believe. All right. That those things which he saith shall. He shall have whatsoever he says. If you be. Believe. I don't think people know what believe means. Oh, Lord. I just praying, praying that you bless me, praying that you'd heal me, Lord. I'm just praying, praying, praying. Most people don't know what the word believe means. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. A believer must believe that he is vested. Say that. Say, a believer, a believer. must believe. A believer must believe that he is vested with authority. Now, if I got into that intersection over there on Beltair 100, just like this, and I went, boom! But when I put that uniform on, and I put that badge on, I believe that I am vested. Because if you dare go through that intersection, with my hand being up, I will give you a Ticket. What does believe mean? You know what? When I tell you what believe means, it's not going to be anything like you thought believe meant. So do you believe in Jesus? I said, do you believe in Jesus? Say, I believe in Jesus. Okay. So what does believe mean? To believe means to be, say be, and live. To be and live. In other words, to believe means I am to be and then to live what I believe. I am a Christian, but I treat people like crap. I believe in Jesus heals, but I'll never pray for the sick. I believe that Jesus gave me all power and authority, but I'm just not good enough for that. To believe means to live what you believe. To believe means that I believe in the Son of God and so that the image of Christ is working in me. When people see me, they can see Christ in me because I be live. I live what I say I am. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me. If you don't be Believe that he has given you power and authority. You've got a scapegoat. It's called ordinary prayers. Ordinary prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord. Blah, 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 blah. 
one who's in authority, goes to bed and says, in the name of Jesus, I am a child of the Most High God. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. And devils, you get out of my way. Devils, you must bow in the name of Jesus. No sickness shall linger in my body. In the name of Jesus, because I be leave. Well, let me just tell you something. You can't confess something that you don't believe in. So, like I said, the ordinary prayer life is waits for you there. But it's not the way we pray in authority. Ephesians 1.19. Let me just tell you something. When you leave this church, and you will confront a conflict. When you leave this church, you will confront a conflict. There will be a mountain in your way. Amen? And when that mountain comes in your way, we'll see what you believe in. You'll see. Oh, Pastor Mike, would you pray for me? For th- With me? I, I got to do it? Yeah, because you're the pastor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You don't have authority? Well, you have more than me. Baloney. It's a scapegoat. It's trash. Me pray for you? For authority? You don't pray for authority. You're vested with it. Now, I'm not taking nothing away from prayer. He loves talking with you. He loves communicating with you. I mean, do you, do you pray to get authority? No. Why? You pray to talk with him. You, pr- you pray to him to worship him and communicate with him and thank him for all the wonderful things that he's done. In fact, before you even open up your mouth, he knows everything that you need of anyway. Are you, are you hearing me this morning? All right, Ephesians 1, verse 19. Verse 19 declares, read it with me out loud, 1, 2, and 3. And what is the exceeding greatness of of his power toward us, word, wait a minute, us, word, who, believe. who, believe. what does believe mean? Be and live. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who, believe according to the working of his, ah, power and authority. If you be live, be leave, be leave, say be leave. To be and live means to live in accordance with anything. I believe in the Miami Dolphins. And so then in turn, you be live. You live in accordance with that confession. You watch them, you cheer for them, you paint your face blue for them and all the things that you do because people say, I know you must believe in the Miami Dolphins because everywhere we go, you talk about them, you paint your body like them, you cheer for them, you drink beer with them, you get drunk with them, you must really believe. And yet there's Christians that said, I believe in the Son of God. Uh... Mm Mm-mm. You're not living in accordance with what you say you believe. Your belief is mental apprehension. Say believe. Believe. Say believe. Believe. Means action. Action. Uh Action. Action. If you believe that God has given you authority, that requires action. In the name of Jesus, stop. Not, oh Lord, I pray my soul to keep. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray one day that you would bless me and heal me and bless my kids and all those things. No, that's not believing. That's believing in junk. That's believing in junk. I believe in the Son of God. And in turn, in the name of Jesus, you follow nasty demons. You come out of her. How many times have you seen this room spinning out of control, ladies and gentlemen? 
Did you ever see me say, I want to pray for the sick. I'll be back in 20 minutes. I'll be in the back office praying with incense burning. But ever see me do that? You want me to pray for your healing? I'll see you next week. I have to light some candles and pray a little bit and light some incense. And No. We say, get up here. Get up here. And in the name of Jesus. Are you awake and listening to me? We do not, hear me, we do not believe in something. We do not believe in something. Thing unless our conviction is manifested in our lives. Period. Mark eleven twenty three says, read it again. Come on, now that you know this, this, this foundation, Mark eleven twenty three says, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this, be thou, and be thou, and shall not, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Amen. Now, now I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So somebody comes up to you today and says, I'm having a lot of trouble with my landlord. Really driving me crazy, you know, the landlord. Angry, angry man. Don't know what to do. Would you do me a favor when you get a chance? Would you pray for me? And your response would be, are you a believer? Oh, yes, I am. Strong believer, strong believer. If you're a strong believer, then that belief will manifest itself in that action. So like the police officer standing in front of traffic, right? We raise our rod. Right? We raise our rod like Moses raised his rod and say in the name of Jesus. Oh. Are you catching this? Amen. You know, when I preach a message, I realize that, sadly, some may not get it right away. Some, for some people, it'll take a long time for them to get it. Because what they fail to do is to apply what they've learned in everyday life. They came in here and shouted a thousand hallelujahs, but they failed to apply what they've learned. So the best way to learn and the best way to leave this place being fruitful and spending the last hour and a half here would be to ask the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart when the event arises or the mountain stands in your way. And I'm going to tell you something. Intuitively, you will, you will lean more towards ordinary prayer. But counterintuitively, you will hear what Pastor Mike said, and you will speak to that mountain of affliction and stand there as an ambassador to Christ, as one that has been invested with authority, and say, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2. And verse number four. Come on, read it with me. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, comma, verse five, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Now, no, no, hang on a minute. In other words, 
When we gave our lives to him, we occupy with him. We occupy with him. We are seated with him. Amen. The authority given to him was given to us. Amen. It is our birthright as a believer to have that authority because I be, I be, I be that I am seated in heavenly places with him. Amen. Do you believe that? Baloney! Because if you believed it, you would live it. And you would say, bye-bye, ordinary prayer life. Bye-bye. I can tell you something. When the Holy Spirit showed this to me last week, and he showed this to me, and he rebuked me, he said, don't you dare pacify your congregation and tell them anything less than what I'm telling you right now because they're living way beneath their authority. Say, I, I sit, sit with him, him at his throne. I, I am a partaker of his authority. What does it mean to sit? Does it mean he's lazy? Let me tell you what sitting means. Are you awake? Take a deep breath. Tell me you love me. Love you too. <laughs> sitting indicates, sitting indicates for the first time recorded in Scripture, the work is finished. I've given all power and authority to my children. It's done. It's finished. No more work. No more sweat. No more toil. No more praying. No more nothing. No more works. No more nothing. It's finished. He sits. He rests with you in heavenly places and says, I give to you all power and authority. That's what sitting means. Amen? Say everything is under his feet, and mine too. So look at me. You don't have to climb the heavenly steps to be with him. You don't have to climb the heavenly steps to be with him. You're already with him. I said you're already with him. Only if you believe. Only if you... What does believe mean? To be and live. You got some fear in your life? You got fear in your life? You, you're afraid of certain people, afraid of certain things? You fear about certain things? If you do, that's because you don't believe. You shouldn't be afraid of the dark. You shouldn't be afraid of thunder or lightning. You shouldn't be afraid of bugaboos and witches and warlocks and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Because you have authority! Oh, but I'm afraid to fly. Yeah, I believe in Christ, but I'm afraid to fly. You're a fool. There's no reason to be afraid to fly. Because you have authority. When you get on that airplane, we do every time. We take our hand and we go, in the name of Jesus, Psalms 91. I'm a child of God. I want an aisle seat close to the front. A la 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 la. Because I'm a child of God. Because I have authority. I'm a believer. I believe. Amen. Are you guys catching this? Oh, the proof will be in the pudding. The proof will be in the pudding when you face your next mountain of affliction. Say, belief is faith. Ha! Faith. Look at Ephesians 2, 5, and 6 again. Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. Even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved. Come on, read it with me, verse 6. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? All right, so if they, you do, there will be action. Put your hands together and say, Lord, I, 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 I believe that I am 
seated with you in heavenly places. And your brain says, no, I don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Now, let me just tell you something. When I say put your hands to heaven and make this confession, do you think I'm doing it because I'm trying to irritate you? I'm doing it because I know the stink of this flesh. And I'm going to just tell you something. When a pastor tells you to do something, you do it. Because there's a moment that heaven stands at attention and waits to see and hear whether or not your confessions are authentic or not. God does not like sticks in the mud. <clears throat> he is waiting for you to believe and confess with your mouth that you are seated in heavenly places with him. He's waiting to hear that from you. Well, I can do it my own way, Pastor. Baloney. Your way's not working, Mr. and Mrs. Ordinary Prayer. When God created Adam, the dust of the ground. He took dust and made Adam. He took Adam, dust, shaped him and molded him in the image of God and went <laughs> and breathed in him the breath of life. Adam had dominion and authority over the earth. He was given the authority and the power to be fruitful and multiply. He lost that authority. He lost it because of sin. Jesus comes, who we call the second Adam, and is obedient to God and restores that authority on earth. But when he restores that authority on earth, Something happened. He left the building. He took off. He left earth. But then he said to his disciples, I give you now all power and authority. You are my authority on earth, just as it is in heaven. So, I want you to go like this. Come on, go like this. Say bye-bye, bye -bye. ordinary prayers, and hello, hello. Prayers, of prayers of authority. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I give you permission, give you permission. To, use to use my life, my life. and my body, my body. to speak Jesus. authority on earth just as it is in heaven. He says, tell them. I need men and women of honor to take the authority on this earth and bind those devils. Do you know, folks, that every problem in this world, every sickness, every disease, every pharaoh, every mountain, every bondage is all linked to demonic activity? Did you know that? I was walking through the hills of Missouri the other day, and the Lord said, look up in the sky. And I looked up in the sky, and he said, if you could see the, the demonic realm, you would see millions upon millions of demons flying around this place. If you could see in the demonic realm, you would, you would run back to your condominium in fear because I can't show you those things right now. Because all around you, he said, are principalities and powers of the air. And they have been assigned to every one of the children of the Most High God to harass, intimidate, and afflict. So he said, in the meantime, he said, praise me, believe me, walk in my precious name and take your authority. 
All right, I want to teach you a prayer, and I'm going to close up, and we're going to take communion. Amen? I want to teach you a prayer. If you believe that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ, if you believe that, then there will be action. If you don't believe that, then there will be no action. Stay with me. If you say you believe that and there's no action, you're fooling yourself. The purpose of the Father provides that each child of his may be the sharer of his throne of authority of his risen, exalted son. Do you believe that? Yeah? Okay. Say, all power and authority have been given to me in the name of Jesus, I believe, right now. Okay. So let me teach you a prayer. Here's the prayer. Holy Spirit, I yield my heart to you. I accept your word. I believe that I am seated in heavenly places with Christ. Therefore, therefore, I humbly and with honor take my seat in the heavenly places in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, teach me how to fulfill my ministry. Teach me how to exercise the authority that you have given me. Train me day by day how to perfect my position in Christ so that your will and your purpose from the beginning of time may be fulfilled in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the name My body is healed. My children are blessed. Take your hands off of my babies right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that your purpose for my children will be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that my body is healed. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over my church. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over my job. In the name of Jesus, I command every demon from hell. To stop, to stop harassing, harassing my, life. my life now, now. in the name of Jesus. Because all power, all, power, all, authority, all authority has been granted to me because I believe that I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Now and forevermore, Holy Spirit, loosen my lips to speak boldly the authority that my great God and King has given me. Do you feel good? Yes. 